do first is we're going to do the crew. It's really simple. Everything is standard apart from observation periscope, which we're going to make empty. This is because so randomly at times they'll go onto the periscope while you're trying to be sneaky and then you'll get caught and then it's game over. So I like to kind of keep that empty because otherwise it just kind of makes a bit of a nuisance and you have to remember to kind of stop anybody from using it. So I like to use it like this, keep it standard. Then we have the officers. The officers I've changed quite a bit, um, but it's fairly simple again. So all of the officers are gonna be uh, 11 on sleep. Sleep is super important. Sleep is um, basically fundamental. If you don't have sleep, then your officers will fall down, they'll get hurt, they'll they'll kind of need re uh, kind of like recovering and it, it just is a bit of a mess. So sleep, make that sure it's the highest priority. So as soon as they finish their shift, they'll go straight on to um, the sleep. As simple as that. Then we have radio officer. So a radio officer, we only have one, so but we can set him and his priorities. We want medic to be the highest priority after sleep because if someone does collapse or have an issue, then that person can go in and do what they need to do. Then after that, we need listening for contacts, which is eight. Uh, and that's because every time we dive, we want them to be looking for ships. We want them to be trying to find ships. If they're not trying to find ships, then what's the purpose of them? Then finally, radio on seven, which means when we are surfaced, they're listening to the radio and they're finding some um, information from headquarters. Next up, we have engineers. So I've set them both to be chief engineers and I've adjusted them again with priorities, sleep as the highest, then repair, then engines. And it's very simple. Repair is very important because if you have any damage on your ship, it could mean that the crew are gonna die. So we need to make sure that they're there ready to repair straight away. And engines we want to be high as well because we want them to actually go and reduce the fuel, to increase the fuel economy as much as possible. Um, and if they're on engines all the time, that's great. Torpedoes we don't set here because we actually can do that manually. Then finally we have watch officers. So I've set them both as watch officers and their job is again, sleep highest priority, then navigation. Navigation is so important. Please, please, please set navigation as the highest priority because this will reduce your, um, your kind of distance that you, sorry, increase your distance. I keep saying reduce, increase your distance that you can travel with fuel economy and also you won't get lost. And if you get lost, it is a nightmare. You'll have to try and find yourself again. And it's really, really tough because um, you will lose your ship on the map. And that's really, really bad. And then finally, we've got calm down because some of our crew may have breakdowns and we need our watch officers to be like, come on guys, let's do this. We haven't set um, look for contacts as a, uh, a priority because we can get them to do that manually again. So that is our tasks. Just remember a well-prioritized crew is the difference between sinking the enemy and sinking yourself. Next up, crew schedules. Believe it or not, your crew needs rest too. Oh, they'll start hallucinating and trust me, nothing good comes from your watch officer thinking a dolphin is an enemy ship. Balance is the key here. So we want to keep half the crew resting at all times while the other half is hard at work because burnout is a real issue. So we need to set a realistic shift pattern that allows the boat to function smoothly. So I've kept the crew shifts the same. However, I've changed the officers. So the officers are now six on, six off. So you'll see here the watch officers are six off, six on, whereas this one is six on, six off. Um, and the same with the engineers. Um, however, the radio man is slightly different because we only have one. I've kind of got him on a three on, three off um, priorities. And that's really important because it's going to match with our dive schedule, um, which I'll show you in a second. So here, I think the main thing here is a well-crested crew will just follow your orders better. And they'll probably even laugh at your bad jokes. Even in a cramped tin can like a U-boat, organizing your crew into squads can make life easier. Think of them like the Avengers, if the Avengers smell like fish. Create specific squads for specific scenarios. So we want here, for example, um, all our sailors to be on the shift. So we've got eight on each shift. That's perfectly enough. We don't need to add more. We don't need to add less. Um, and then we have our crew members where I've actually given specific sailors to these crew. So you can see here that class has two sailors, Hubert has two sailors and so on. And that's really important again for the fuel economy aspect because the more sailors you have assigned to that task. So when they're navigating, they'll get a 50% boost. And if they're in engineering, they're on the engines, they'll get another 50% boost, which is going to increase our fuel economy massively. So it's really, really important that we do this. So we set these numbers as they are. The radio man, we can set sailors to them, but we don't really need to because we'll find them with a hydrophone anyway. So that's fine with me. And then finally, diving isn't just a dive and forget operation. Your crew needs to be in top shape every time you go down. And I'm not talking about their bodies. You need to make sure your dive schedule aligns with the radio man. If it doesn't align with the radio man, then it's not going to work. 
Basically what we've got here is a 2-4 strategy. So we've got two hours of the radio on the hydrophone and then an hour on the surface with the radio itself listening from the headquarters. Then three hours of rest. And this is exactly the same copy from what our radio man has, except for he's spending one hour above the surface rather than all three hours down below. And that's really important. So that gives him those three hours sleep and then he can just repeat. And that's gonna make you find ships so easy. And after all, the last thing you want is to surface right into the spotlight of a destroyer because half your crew is too tired. So we want to be making sure all these schedules and things are correct. So congratulations, captains. With these tips, your crew should be running like a well-oiled machine or at least not like a bunch of toddlers in a toy store. Make sure you hit that like button if you found this useful and don't forget to subscribe to get more in-depth tips for you both. Let me know in the comments how you run your crew. Do you go for efficiency or is your sub the sleepiest in the Kriegsmarine? Until next time, keep your periscope up, your crew well-rested and your torpedoes well-aimed. Much better than mine.